how are you guys today i'm going to talk about how you can utilize this summer to learn quantitative finance so people who are interested in uh, a career in quantitative finance or for that matter any uh, area of finance i like to talk about uh, to them as to how they can make the best use of the time in in this summer uh, well, I've made many videos about how to learn quant finance, but finance in general uh, on this channel. There's several of them, but I like to, uh, you know, uh, summarize a bit uh, for students uh, who, you know, probably have a good time uh, in the summer. They have free time, no universities, no colleges, no, uh, no homework to do. So how do you make the best use of this free time to learn, uh, you know, quantitative finance if you're interested in this in this particular field? Uh, but some of these advices would also be very uh, uh, useful for other, uh, you know, career options in the field of finance as well. Um, okay. So first thing is that, uh, you know, it, if you want to know uh, more about a given field, it's the best thing to do is to first read, read and read. You read more about that. You know um, and how to read where to read well nowadays you have many options right there used to be a time when you used to you know search for good blogs and so on but nowadays you know you can uh, you know you have multiple uh, you have many uh, sources of uh, information many um, platforms where you can uh, get uh, get information from right but then uh, you could also be lost in uh, information overload right there's too much out there you know you don't know where to start and, and how to start and, and all that can be very confusing right so um first of all just read the 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 wikipedia page right just to know more about this field i have made many videos on this channel as well you could also go through some of these videos if you have a bit of a patience to listen to long videos because i make long videos uh it, it's not easy to actually learn something from this one minute video so you know it's very important therefore to be a bit patient and have that sort of uh, commitment to uh, uh, you know watch uh, videos there are many people actually who have made videos on on youtube i have also made many of them just go through them uh, learn from the wikipedia you know just read the quant finance space uh, for, on wikipedia you can use the ai tools as well to just to learn a bit about what this field is about and why you should be uh, doing this right uh, and a question about how do you, uh, you know, make progress? Let's say you already know a bit about this field and the career options out there. How do you go about, um, you know, learning something concrete, right? Learning something technical, something that is going to be useful uh, when you go for job search, right? The basics are fine. I mean, you can always learn the basics uh, very, pretty quickly. But how, unless you know a bit about the details, uh, yeah, nobody's going to hire you, right? So, so uh, very important is to uh, know actually what you're good at, right? Uh, are you a good developer? Or do you have just interest in finance? Because quant finance is a bit of uh, a lot of things, right? Um, it, it has mathematics, it has finance, it has programming, right? Um, so it's good to identify where int your interest lies. If you are someone who is a developer, but has some interest in finance, you can you know think about uh, making a career in quantitative development. If you are a mathematician uh, who has uh, some interest uh, in the field of finance, then you'll be more of a quant researcher, quant dev, uh, modeler, and so on. And if you are a you know proper finance guy and you are more interested in compliance and risk areas, then uh, you could also learn a bit about quant finance. That would really uh, give you an advantage. Uh, when you search for opportunities in the you know in the finance uh, field all right so depending on what your interests are where interests are you will then go ahead with uh, uh, you know learning right and there are many ways uh, in which you could uh, you could learn things um, books are really good ways uh, problem with books um, is that for beginners it's difficult to find good books there's simply not many good books for beginner absolute beginners most of the books are for specialists and uh, if you go through those books probably you will be uh, put off a bit uh, simply because these books can be very technical and for beginners that can be a bit of a challenge right um, youtube videos are a great way to get started but then very unorganized very uh, unstructured so that can be a big challenge some of the good blogs out there amazing just read a couple of them 
but then you know knowing actually where to start what are the things to do what are the different steps to take um, and which are the topics to read and which are topics not to even read because you can't just read everything right so so i think that structure is a bit difficult to find there are short courses out there you could you could go for some of the short courses um, good to connect with people who are in this field so that they can guide you with what are the topic that you sh you should be learning right uh, i always advise uh, my own students is that when you are a beginner don't worry too much about how much you understand in a given topic right just read whatever you understand just fine go to the next topic learn and learn you know it's uh, this field is not uh, a field which is similar to other fields in many ways simply because uh, it is very interdisciplinary and it is very applied so unless you really work in an uh, applied setup you will not never be able to understand everything uh, very clearly right uh, even many academic finance people don't understand uh, the actual uh, applications simply because many of them haven't really worked uh, in in the actual finance setup so don't worry as a beginner if you're a bit stuck you know just go ahead with learning wherever you, uh, you learn whatever you learn but you know just cover a breadth cover a uh, number of material just go through uh, you know freely available courses or to read some books or if you have some money then you know go for a short course um, highly recommend i would recommend because uh, if you go for a short course i think it's a lot more structured and you will have a better time uh, you can make the most of uh, of the time summer time simply because within uh, six weeks or eight weeks time uh, if you learn in a more structured way then you will be able to uh, make good progress right good to get some mentors if uh, whoever you get it from from your college seniors your you know if somebody you know online somebody you know who you follow online uh, it could be um, he or she could be um, just anyone but make sure that the person has some real world experience and uh, not somebody who is just doing uh, you know research in an academic setup or somebody who is still a student I would say, you know, always go for mentors if for someone who is in the industry professional and spent many years in the industry, <clears throat> right? So, uh, long answer to a short question. There is no one size fit all rule. Uh, you could choose um, anything that you want. I highly rec uh, advise you to, you know, do some projects actually along the way. Uh, so, don't just learn the theory. That's obviously very important but also do some projects, whatever it may be, right? If you do some automation activities in some trading, uh, implementing trading strategy, or doing some activities related to, let's say, you know, forecasting of macroeconomic events, or climate events, uh, which could impact, uh, you know, in uh, returns in investment. And it doesn't have to be just, you know, uh, the conventional finance, which is, you know, black shoal model of derivative pricing or building value at risk models. Okay, that's more conventional. You could also do some do something different. You know, I know someone who is doing weather forecasting and its relationship with uh, finance. Right, that is an amazing project for an absolute beginner. Uh, very different. Uh, it might also you know generate interest from seasoned uh, working professionals because probably many of them haven't uh, built such something like that, right? So good to have some projects actually, you know, nothing like building some projects, you know, no matter how much you learn from books and courses and blogs and videos, um, you will not learn much unless you really do something on your own. And that's uh, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm advising you to, you know, do some projects. Um, use any programming language you are comfortable with, it may not be just Python, obviously Python is very popular, but you know it could be C, C++, MATLAB, R, um, Octave, Go and whatever language, C++, C Sharp, whatever language you are comfortable with, Java even, uh, just build something, right? Um, you know if you are interested in finance, if you are good in programming and uh, you have some mathematical skills, um, somebody told me a decade back that you will never be out of job, I mean you will always be in demand in the field because finance uh, is pretty big, pretty big field, by the way, you know, it's one of the biggest industry in the world. And uh, almost everything that you do in the field of finance is, is numerical or is quantitative in nature. Some are highly quantitative, 
uh, other areas are less quantitative, but uh, you won't find areas in the field of finance uh, where uh, the numerical skills or quantitative skills uh, are not used. In one form or the other, uh, quant skills are always used some everywhere. So, uh, you know, you will always be uh, in demand uh, as long as you have, uh, you know, skills with numbers, you have interest in finance, you have understanding of products in the field of finance, whether it's uh, investing or lending or insurance. Uh, payment and whatever um, may be the product or area of business and you can write some code you know writing code nowadays uh, is perhaps a de facto skill in almost uh, many areas in the field of uh, you know any, well any, any any field nowadays certainly in the field of finance so if you can write some code and, and learn some of these areas then uh, that's going to be a really good um, uh, option for you when you apply for jobs after you finish degrees, right? People who are already work prof working professionals and they have, uh, let's say, work experience in the field of finance and they want to learn quant finance, I highly advise you to do course. I mean, self-study won't help for working professionals because first of all, you have less time. You do not have the luxury of experimenting and exploring and, and playing around. You really need uh, someone who will uh, or who can guide you a bit as to what to learn, what not to learn, and what the structure should be, and how do you sort of you know finish something in two three months time, uh, spending about 100, 100, 150 hours maximum, right? For that you need a mentor, you need a, a course to do, right? So, but for students, I would say you know you can go either ways, right? If you have some money, that's fine. You can go for a course. If you do not have money, that's also fine. You know, um, you you can learn on your own. Uh, most quants, in fact, are self-taught quants. You know, most quants probably have never done any long-term course. Some people obviously have master's degree in related fields, such as quantitative finance, econometrics, and statistics, and so on. But a lot of them come from, you know, not financial background or finance background. Uh, many of them haven't really even uh, attended any dedicated course in their life. Right, it's, so it's, it's quite possible that you can self teach yourself uh, quant finance, uh, like in anything else in the world. Um, so, you know, the, uh, and, and first of all, uh, I'd like to also um, tell you that, you know, there is no standard rule as such, right? right? Whatever I just told you, you could also just ignore all of that and do, uh, just learn in the way that you want. That can also be a very good way of doing things, right? Um, why I'm sharing this is simply because I myself, a uh, work, working professional, I have taught quant finance to many people. So I do have a bit of an experience what really works and what doesn't. So maybe that's why I'm sharing from my own experience, but there may be other ways, you know, I've come across people who never really learned anything, you know, they just were just PhD physics or PhD maths, they just applied, you know, they didn't even, they didn't even learn anything in finance before working in their first job. That's quite possible as well, right? There are people also who think that uh, if you want to work in quant finance, you don't need to learn any finance. Just programming and some mathematics uh, is more than enough. Uh, I beg to disagree. I, I don't think that's uh, always the case. But some people have managed to find jobs, even with that sort of a preparation. Okay. And there are certain companies out there who you know, prefer such people who are just you know, computer programmers, and the finance skills and even math skills are secondary in, for some of these, uh, you know, trading companies, for example. Okay. So uh, entirely up to you how you want to go about it. Right. Um, all right. So thanks. Thanks for watching. Any questions, as always, let me know in the comment section.